All right, I'm getting ready to continue the recap job on this HP Pavilion A1210N. Um, uh, like I did on the last uh, motherboard for that Everex computer, I'm just going to start by replacing the really bad ones that are all bulged out and see if the board will post before I go any farther. Um, these are all the 820 microfarad 6.3 volt caps that I needed. Um, being the dork I am, I forgot to get the 470 and 1000 microfarad capacitors. Uh, I had them shipped to where I work and I forgot to grab those. But these are the only ones I need to, to determine what, whether the board is going to boot or not. So I'm going to get started with those first. And I still haven't put this darn server back in the rack, so I still got to kind of talk over it. I'll be putting that back in the rack later this weekend. So now that my soldering equipment's all warmed up, let's get on with it. One thing I almost forgot, uh, because I'm so used to doing it the conventional way, on these Asus motherboards, they use the white stripe as the positive, not the negative, like they should normally be doing. So if you're ever recapping one of these, just remember that they're labeled backwards. In fact, I can try to find one here, like. Over here, this is a factory installed capacitor. The white stripe is facing the PCI connector on the board, but the cap and negative is actually facing the edge of the board. So I guess they just like to label them their own way. There's been a couple uh, of manufacturers that, that label them the opposite way, but the one I run into the most is, is the ASUS boards. I don't know if they still do that or not. Uh, if any of you guys have worked on any of the newer boards, um, from the last couple of years or so, uh, let me know if they still label them backwards like they used to. Alright, it's all recapped now. I did end up replacing the ones that I forgot. I just had to get a little bit resourceful. For that 470 microfarad one, I used a 330 microfarad solid state capacitor. Normally you would never want to go down in microfarads, but for a solid state cap, where the impedance is a bit lower, it should be just fine in this application. And for those 1000 microfarad 16 volt, I just used 25 volt capacitors. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but they're in there and they'll do the job just fine. In fact, they'll probably last even longer than the motherboard will. Another thing I did while I had this out was re-solder the heat the Northbridge heat sink clips where they're attached to the motherboard because those have a nasty habit of pulling through the solder sometimes and the heat sink just falls off. Uh, I've seen it on a lot of tie-in motherboards and you know a lot of uh, any any board that has that that style of uh, heat sink clip sometimes they're just not soldered well enough and they pull right on through. But let me drop this back in the case and see if it'll actually boot into the OS. I've never started this computer up before, so this ought to be interesting. Well, the only problem I ran into here is I found out, right as I was finishing up the cables, that the SATA connector for the hard drive was actually pulled right off the motherboard. It was just the pins sticking out. And, of course, the other end of the connector was still on the SATA cable. I got it back on there, but I don't know if it's going to have a good connection anymore. Those pins are extremely fragile. But nonetheless, I'm ready for the uh, first power up ever. This thing is pretty uh, crammed in that case. One of, the thing I, one of the things I don't like about these is how the, uh, the drive cage kind of overlaps the motherboard. It makes it kind of cramped. I'm using the high pro power supply that came out of that Everex machine because I trust it more than that best tech that was in here. And I've got a grungy old IBM keyboard hooked up. Let's see what happens. Ah, beeping. Let me check the RAM real quick. I'm wondering if this one gig chip that, that the uh, previous owner added to the computer is incompatible with the board. Uh, this is a dual channel system, so you really need matched pairs of RAM, one, one pair for each bank. So I've just got the factory memory in there now, and I'm, let's try again and see what it does.
There it goes. I wonder if it's going to see the hard drive. Yep, I hear it reading. Awesome. I'm going to have to dig through my uh, stash of RAM and see if I've got another matching pair of uh, DDR400 sticks. And by the way, this Acer monitor, this was a previous repair project of mine probably, oh, maybe a year ago I fixed this monitor. That's probably why it looks familiar if any of you guys were wondering where it came from. This was my co-worker's computer, so... Um, I don't know if they've got passwords on here. I don't have a mouse yet. I gotta wait for the driver to install. <laughs> it's always an issue with uh, XP. Is gotta wait a bit for the computer to catch up and install the mouse driver. Five twelve mega RAM ain't exactly helping. I like to run at least one gig on Windows XP. definitely doing a lot of work because the hard drive is going crazy. The light's just practically on solid. Let's see here. Hey, the mouse works. Cool. Man, is this thing slow. Holy crap. Well, it's been about five minutes now and this doggone thing is still loading. Windows has recovered from a serious error. Hmm. Zone alarm. Change alert. Why is it that every time I get a computer in here that, that uh, still has its original installation on it, it's like unbelievably screwed. Like so slow you wonder how the person didn't go crazy trying to use the computer but I did find in my box of RAM a 1 gig kit of DDR400 so I'm gonna put this in there and that should speed it up a bit but ultimately I'm gonna have to get out my Windows CDs and give this thing a fresh install of Windows Media Center Edition already got another gig of RAM in there Let's see what happens this time Sweet, it worked. Oh, you know what else I gotta do? I gotta plug the hard drive back in. Uh, had to unplug the SATA connector from the hard drive just to get enough room to reach the RAM chips back there. I hate this power supply. There's no uh, no AC switch in the back of that power supply at all. It's kind of cumbersome. Hopefully things will move a little bit faster now. Usually I like to put the bigger RAM chips in the slots closest to the CPU, but uh, I'm not too worried about it right now when I'm just testing. Oh, it's definitely... Uh, 
getting to this point a lot quicker now. Oh wow. That was like so much faster than it was on 512 Meg. That ain't even funny. And this system also has a PCI Express slot, so I'm debating whether the onboard video is any better than this piece of crap G4 7300LE. At least I think that's what it is. Yeah, 7300LE. Cause this is just laying around, I could drop that in there. Still taking forever and a day to load a million programs in the system tray. Good lord. Hard drive just going nuts. This thing's really screwed up. I need to do the uh, do the fresh install. Service Pack 3. Nine hundred and ninety megahertz. That doesn't seem right at all. I wonder if it's got a uh, if it's throttling down or if something's not right in the BIOS, because that seems awful low. Anyway. I'll dig into some more later tonight. I got some other stuff I wanna wanna do for the time being, so I'm just gonna put the cover back on this and call it good for now. Yeah, like I suspected it must have been throttling down because I went to the properties again, now it says 1.78 gigahertz, which is I think the uh Athlon 64 3500 plus is actually a 1.8. Still kinda odd though. Anyway, on to the next project.